is the perfect RIA In case you didn't know Bringing you all the strategies To help your business grow Are you happy? Are you satisfied? Are you hanging on the edge of your seat? Sit back and listen in While you feel the beat, yeah Another myth bites the dust Hello TBR Nation, this is Amber Kuhn from The Perfect RIA. Thank you for joining me on today's Follow-Up Friday, where I'll be covering the highlights and action items from this week's episodes. On Monday, Matt and Micah discuss effective communication with clients and putting good tools and technology into place into old school practices, specifically with video communication. Micah said that the more that we embrace technology to use old school successful practices, the better things are. So when he does something that works really well, such as a meeting summary, he can then digitize that to where clients can and will watch it multiple times. He said his clients love it. Matt said that when there's a new way to do something, a lot of people will then think that the old ways have died. But he said you can adapt the old ways to new technology. He added that all the same rules apply because while technology changes, we're the same humans we were a generation ago. Micah coaches advisors on using bomb bomb videos, and he reminds them that the video they'll send will be taken out of context, so you need to provide all the context necessary. Clients will rewatch them dozens of times, including right before their next meeting, and they'll also forward those videos to their attorneys, their CPA, or their friends. Matt and Micah discussed how when mistakes are made, because let's face it, no one is perfect. That conversation needs to be done face to face. That is never something to be communicated via email, letter, or a bomb bomb video. Micah added that bomb bombs are an accelerant, so you have to be careful about how you use them because they are so powerful. Some other things to consider that can have a negative effect is if you're sending out a poor quality video, if it's too long, if people can't see you, or if the sound isn't good. So you want to make sure that you have a checklist before those videos are sent because you'd hate to create that, send it out to your clients only to learn that there wasn't any sound playing. Micah also cautioned against using video to explain a technical concept. However, he said he would use it to follow up on something technical that's being done or to respond to a simpler email question. One of the tips that Matt and Micah recommend is to hold up a piece of paper with the client's name so that they know it's not a generic video. It's been personalized for them. Matt said that when implementing video communication, you need to make sure that you're managing those expectations. He said that when he first started doing this, he would mention that they were trying out new technology and he would add bullet points to an email as to what they were going to talk about. So if the video or tech doesn't work, the clients at least have that information and they're aware in case there ends up being an issue. Micah said that the overwhelming response from the videos that he sends out is so positive because he said they're so much more animated. Another tip that he shared was that you have to be engaged and emotional. You want to use your hands and look into your camera. You have to have that confidence and charisma and be able to communicate that with your clients through that video. And Matt added that it borders on being melodramatic, but you need to consider how do you make that communication experience as pleasant as possible? He said your ability to communicate effectively and your client being excited to see you is critical. Matt and Micah also addressed how they reference or take notes during video calls. Matt will put a post-it or his notes for the client meeting on his monitor to help so that he's communicating directly to the camera and the client. And Micah said that when you look down, make sure that you address that with the client so that they know you're not just checking your phone or doing something else. Matt and Micah then shared some ways that you can use video messaging, such as post-meeting summaries, which are relatively simple, responding to emails, Anytime there's a massive change that affects clients as a firm-wide message, or for introductions for estate planning attorneys and CPAs, and Micah added that he'll use this if he's addressing multiple things to the same party at once, for example, the client, CPA, and attorney, or in family meetings. He said he doesn't like using them if he has something new or complex to go over. That he prefers to have a more in-depth conversation on. But if it's something simple, he'll use a video. Matt and Michael will also use a video for clients who can't come in for surge, as well as for introducing a new team member or advisor and how this will be beneficial to them. The guys wrapped up the episode by sharing that while the technology is new, the method isn't. 
They said, you need to look at how do you deliver massive value? How do you give personalized, actionable advice? How do you make it entertaining and enjoyable? And are you doing whatever you can to make that client experience as good as it can possibly be? And that whatever you can do to improve that client experience is something that's worth pursuing and mastering. Let's get into action items from Monday's episode. First, decide how many outbound correspondences do you need each week on average to get through your entire client base during a certain period of time. For example, that might be each quarter. Determine how are you making proactive contact with your clients. Second, just do it. Pick what you're going to do and start doing video messaging and start with meeting summaries. Lastly, join our Nation Power Session on March 29th. Registration will be available soon on theperfectdiary.com. On Wednesday, Matt was joined by Brian Garris with Triagen to talk about pushing your comfort zone and his transition to an RAA. Brian's one of our Invictus members. He has a practice in Southern California, and he shared that Matt was one of the reasons why he left the wirehouse world. Brian said that that transition to an RAA required a lot of preparation, but once they did this, he said it ended up working out so nicely. He said it helped that it was during COVID and that people were available. And while making a change during that time was an excuse for many people, they decided to push through. Brian said, if not now, then when? He said, looking at what they're doing in the RA world now has allowed them to do what they want to do and run the practice that how they want to run it. Brian said he decided he wanted to be more intentional in his practice. He joined the Victus program. He mapped everything out on his calendar, including his days off. They started doing value adds and focused on creating a surge style meeting schedule. He said it's made them hyper efficient and allowed them to grow. He shared that one of the biggest struggles was with the scripts and communicating with clients while implementing some of the changes. The biggest was being when a client called in and asked to speak to him. That automatic response was always, let me see if Brian is available. Matt said that is code for the client being told, let me see if Brian is important enough to talk to you. Brian then compared this to calling your doctor's office and how that process works. He said that once it's framed that way, then the team can fully understand. Brian talked about getting comfortable with being uncomfortable and that there's always reasons and excuses to not do things. Something he said helped was having an accountability partner. He said, if you're complacent, you're not necessarily pushing your boundaries. He said when you're planning and goal setting that some people will choose a goal that they can automatically achieve just to check that box. But if you truly want to grow, you're going to have to push the boundaries and get uncomfortable. So working with other advisors who are trying to do that helps and having extreme accountability will help you grow individually and grow your firm. He said you need to do the everyday hard things. Brian shared the goals that he had related to value adds, which was going from none to then having done 250 tax return reviews. He's able to build on that and look at what he's going to do to make the next year better. He said that even with how the market has been, their focus has been on the action items and talking about things that are relevant for his client. Let's get into action items from Wednesday's episode. Take some time to get intentional about processes in your day-to-day workflow so that you have things set up so that if you want to grow, everyone knows their roles and responsibilities. And map out your calendar with your team for the entire year, including client events, surge, and value adds. On this week's Worlds to Conquer, Jamie kicked off a discussion of surge and looking at setting up a surge schedule and your team's involvement. Jamie started the episode talking about how her dad, Floyd Chelansky, who started Chelansky and Associates, found that his highest performance days were when he was seeing clients back to back. They moved forward with setting up a surge schedule in their office, and they've been finessing this ever since. Their surge dates are mid-March to mid-April. Then following this, they set up mini surges, and then they have another big surge mid-October to mid-November. If you're looking to implement surge, use the dates that Jamie has shared. They've tried to find different ones, and this has worked best, and Jamie believes this will work for anyone, and that this is when they can deliver the most value to their clients. Jamie spent some time talking about having a hybrid work environment where they have work-from-home employees either some or all of the time. She said most of the time, those employees can work from home. However, there are certain times where they do need to physically be in the office, such as for their spring surge. 
Jamie shared that before this surge, they do a team retreat to strengthen their team because as she shared, people who play together have higher levels of trust with one another. Jamie said that while their office surges at the same time, the different pods, which Jamie shared our relationship managers and the operations team will be busy at different times. The relationship managers are going to be super busy about two weeks before surge to make sure that all the documents have been provided by the clients for the financial advisors. They're also following back up after that client appointment. And then after surge is when the operations team gets really busy because of all that work that's being generated during surge and then needs to be processed. Jamie talked about policies in the office and the importance of having your team's feedback and compromising with them. For example, she talked about processes and the need for rigid flexibility, including no same day paperwork or no next day appointments unless there's an emergency, which is clearly defined for the team. Jamie also talked about the SOAP format that they use for note-taking that gives specific information about a client meeting and any action that needs to take place. Again, there's a reason that Jamie recommends that you use their format and their surge schedule. They've already tested this and they've made the mistakes and revised their processes to figure out what works. She said, stop challenging the system. Just do what works. Let's get into action items from Thursday's episode. If you have hybrid workers, you need to have a hybrid working arrangement. Backstage Pass and Invictus members, reach out to us and you can get a copy of the one that Jamie uses in her office. You need to implement Surge. Take the Surge schedule that Jamie shared. Implement it first and finesse it later. Do what works. As a reminder, their Surge schedule is mid-March to mid-April as people are preparing their tax documents for their CPA. Sprinkle in some mini surges. And then the next big surge is October to mid-November. Jamie also recommends having pods, relationship managers and operations, and to have a conversation with your team to talk about what policies are needed for them to be at their best. Don't overcomplicate your policies. Be open to the give and take to create a dynamic workforce that benefits your clients. That wraps up this week's recap. Thank you for joining me on today's Follow-Up Friday. Be sure to give us five stars wherever you're enjoying this podcast and share this or any of our episodes with another advisor or a team member who you think might benefit from listening. And until next time, happy planning. Hold on before we go. Something that you need to know. This isn't tax, legal, or investment advice. That isn't our intent. Information designed to change lives Financial planning can make you thrive Start today, don't think twice Be a better husband, father, mother, and wife